hello from Turkestan. It's a beautiful view I have here. I already arrived in the afternoon and now the light is so beautiful. I have to run outside to take pictures. Oh, you can't really see it. The colors are insane. Yeah, I have to go. I'll explore the city a bit more tomorrow and I'll take you with me. Shopping mall in Kazakhstan. <laughs> it's so funny. This square here looks like an Arabic version of Singapore. <laughs> Literally. I didn't expect that. I didn't know that Turkestan was so rich. The whole city is a shopping center. <laughs> So many new buildings, so many mosques also. I kind of miss the night market from Southeast Asia here. After 6 p.m. there's no bazaar. But yeah, I'm gonna check out the bazaar tomorrow during the day and then uh, I think I will hitchhike to uh, ruins that I researched before that are like one hour from here. Sooner said than done, the next morning I went to Kuanish Bazaar. And one thing instantly caught my eye, the way the people here sell the bread in strollers, <laughs> like babies. I was so impressed and I couldn't take my eyes off it. Until one guy came and asked me through Google Translate what I'm interested in. And as I said, I like to learn about culture and the people and that I really like the way they sell the bread. <laughs> he offered to bring me to the factory where they actually bake the bread and that we can sell the bread afterwards together at the market. And I said, of course, because these kind of interactions with the locals is what I love. <laughs> so I followed him through the market like a puppy. <laughs> I know probably not everyone would have followed this stranger through the alleys of Turkestan, but it felt fun to me and it didn't turn out to be dangerous, so I'm glad I did it. <laughs> we were constantly communicating through Google Translate, that's why he always looks at his phone. <laughs> Do you understand Russian? Ah, oh, no! There it is. Smaller than I expected. Oh, cool. Salim. <laughs> wow. Salim. Salim. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> oh. The local bakery here looks like it's one room filled with heaps of dough and this talented man like, presses the bread, puts a stamp on it and then throws it to his colleague on the other side and he will bake it in the oven and uh, take it out of the fridge.
He's live on TikTok right now. <laughs> Ahmed, thank you. <laughs> Back to the other side to see how they stick the dough to the walls of the tandoor oven. And in this last step, they put butter on it. I don't know the physics behind this and which forces work here, but somehow the bread does not fall down. It's really impressive. How long am I a child here? <laughs> I don't know. After around 20 minutes, bread is ready to take out. Ooh, look at that. It's literally asking to be eaten. Now Ergash will put some bread in the trolley and we will go and sell the bread at the market together. Tata Rahmed! Oh, for me! <laughs> Thank you! Oh, amazing! Let's go! Let's sell the babies! <laughs> yes, we sold some! <laughs> Good job! <laughs> you don't even have to pay with uh, cash because um, here in Kazakhstan they use also an app called Kaspi and it works like PayPal and you just transfer the money to another person and they do it here on the markets a lot and they receive the money within seconds so it's very very uh, forward. We don't do this even in Germany yet, not that much. And let me tell you, the bread tasted amazing. So fluffy. Now it's time for some more sightseeing, so I have to say goodbye and thank you, Ergash. It was really friendly that he showed me the factory. See you again. In the heart of Turkestan you find the mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yasabi. He was a distinguished Sufi master of the 12th century and Lao lies in this beautiful, colorful mausoleum. It was super hot that day, around 43 degrees, so I went for a cold drink. 
I've never tried that one before, so I was curious how the taste would be. Thank you. Mm. It's salty. <laughs> I don't know why I expected a sweet drink, but it's like kefir or iron, and inside there's chickpeas and corn and some grains. It's really interesting, but it's not sweet. <laughs> I thought it's sweet. <laughs> interesting. After this, I went back to the hostel, cooked something for dinner, packed my stuff and made my way to Aristamba. It's 7.30 p.m. and I've just decided to not stay another night at the hostel, but go somewhere and sleep in the tent. Maybe it's not the smartest move, <laughs> but um, I didn't feel like I wanted to stay in a city anymore even though Turkestan was nice, but also it's super rich and usually I prefer the places that have more character, that are more rusty and um, full of people. So yeah, I decided to have some adventure now, finally. I mean, why did I buy the tent? I want to use it. <laughs> First time hitchhiking in Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Okay, let's see how far I get because I didn't write a cardboard because I didn't know what to write on it. It's a bit flexible today. So all I planned is that I want to visit a mausoleum, which is one hour from here. Um, and it's open until 9 p.m. So I thought maybe I could make it, but maybe I just sleep there and see it for sunrise or for sunset. At this point, I didn't know that it would not be a pleasant night, but actually the opposite. It would be the worst night I've had so far and my very first bad experience as a female solo traveler. In the next video, you'll see why.